there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I really don't have a plan for this video, except I need to make a card for my nephew, whose birthday is um, in a couple of days. So you're just going to see me make a card, I guess. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Honestly, I haven't really made a plan, except I know I'm going to do some stamping and coloring with um, markers. So I'm going to get out a little scrap of Nina cardstock. And um, oh, I got a really cute hat for him for his birthday. What did I do with it? Oh my goodness. Oh, here it is. And so I want to make a little monster, kind of, because I thought that hat was so cute. Um, so I'm going to use this little Make a Monster set from Stampin' Up! to make my monster. Maybe a couple monsters. Oh, I just don't know. It's just going to happen. And hopefully it'll turn out good. And if not, the kid's four. I don't think he's going to care. And if not, I don't have to show you this video. I can just not upload it. So I'm going to stamp some marker, uh, some marker, some monsters. I'm using Memento ink. Maybe I'll stamp a couple. Yeah, why don't I? And let's do, uh, let's do this guy here. This little monster. Probably should zoom in a little bit. Why don't I do that? There we go. Do this guy here. Make it that good ninky. I hope so. I like the on the fly right before the birthday party cards because um, I don't really stress about it and I just kind of, you know, start making. I just go to town. Um, I grabbed a few markers before I began in colors that I think will, uh, oh look at that's like a monster party, isn't it? Monster party folks. Oh, I turn it around so it's right up for you. Look at that. I can work upside down. And now we got to put some features onto these guys. Let's, uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, we got a crazy mouth. We'll put that in there. Yes, this is riveting, isn't it? I spent the day shopping with my friends and we went to Hobby Lobby. And a uh, bad idea. We went to Hobby Lobby without a plan. First, it just opened in town. And um, I had several momentary lapses in reason there. Came home with more paper. Bad idea. And then even looking at the paper when I got home, I was like, why? See, 50% off. If it wasn't 50% off, I could have done without it, but... 50% off paper and it's like I don't know I just can't I'm compu I'm, just can't help myself it's insane this is a fun little stamp set I got this a few years ago and I've used it a lot for kids cards those eyeballs jumping right off his head didn't line up too good but eh, I'm not gonna worry about it and do this eyeball for this dude over here and let's see oh maybe some I'm sticking my stamps over there after I use over there after I use them because I want to make sure I wash them before I put them away, and I will. I am good about that. Oh, there's some weird eyeballs. Uh, they might not be eyeballs. I'm not sure. Give this one a mouth. I did to find um, with the uh, with the Stampin' Up stamps. If I put the indexes on the back, they um, they didn't stick to my blocks very well, and that was quite irritating. So I just don't put those stickers on them anymore. Alright, I think that's alright. Looks good to me. Now we're just going to color that up super quick. <clears throat> I did grab a few alcohol markers. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness gracious. And um, let's see, I got three different colors here. I'm going to grab a light purple right behind me, so it's not even going to take too long. There we go. Okay, so let's do, I like to do my shadows first. That's, that's probably dry enough. And so I'm just going to loosely go in here with my dark purple. Look at that, right outside of the lines. It's been a long day, what can I say? And I'm coloring upside down. really doesn't affect my coloring all that much. To tell you the truth, I'm doing kind of a loosey-goosey coloring job here. And I'm going to go in with that lighter color to blend. I find that these markers pretty much all work together pretty well. Purple's a very hard color to blend. I should have gone in with light first, but we'll work it over a couple times and we'll make it work. I think. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this done in 20 minutes. I really don't. That doesn't seem likely, does it? What are we at already? Oh my gosh, that 4 minutes 28 seconds and I'm just coloring some monsters. This is not a good, uh, a good start, I'm afraid. That's alright, we'll just chit-chat. So we went to the Hobby Lobby and I actually got, uh, got my nephew this toy called Boom Whackers. And uh, maybe I'll, if I have time, I'll show you later in the video. Um, but there are all these tubes, and they're tuned to a different note. So you whack them on stuff, and they make um, they make the notes. So it's uh, it's really neat. I'm on the lines again. I'm having a heck of a time. 
All right, we're just gonna forget about that purple guy. I can always cut him off. He may be the uh, he may be that first pancake that never uh, never turns out right. <laughs> and let's do a little bit of darker orange here. I like to mix and match my markers. I have all different brands. They all play nice. Better when I fully awake when I color. But what are you gonna do? It doesn't have to be perfect. See, that's the thing. I think people think everything has to be perfect, but it doesn't. You know, I'm making a card for a kid. It should be fun, whimsical. I find the chisel edge sometimes helps me blend those colors together. I am just being very sloppy because I have a uh, limited time here and I want to make sure that I get everything in if I can. Probably shouldn't have picked a video where I have to color something. So this is definitely not a technique coloring video because it would be a very poor one if it was. <laughs> yeah. I may have to cut those out. I'm not going to cut them out. I probably should, but that's not going to happen. And green. Yeah, let's do this green dude over here. Oh, these colors probably blend a little bit better because they're closer together. They're not so contrasty. Yeah, so back to Hobby Lobby. I bought this 180 sheet of chevron paper because I thought, boy, my life is missing 180 sheets of chevron paper. What am I thinking? I'm going to be papering things with chevrons till I'm like 83 because that's how long it's going to take me to use it up that darn paper. If I don't find use for it in this card, I may take that take it back. I, uh, that was a momentary lapse of reason. But then you think, okay, well, it cost was 10 bucks on sale. 180 sheets. It's a good deal. If I drive all the way back to town, it's probably going to cost me $5 in gas. Probably not a good, you know, probably should just keep it. And I know I'd probably exchange it for something else or end up buying something else because I'd probably go in with a coupon and the coupon would make me spend another, you know, 10 or 15 bucks. See, I just need to stay out of the store. I'm fine until I go in the store and then all bets are off. It's like a gambler going into a casino. All bets are off. Or <laughs> bets are on, actually. In that case, wouldn't they? The bets would be on if it was a gambler in a casino. Um, all right, let's see, do some purple eyeballs here. I have no idea how we're doing for time. And a uh, purple tongue, why not? Why not? They're monsters. Nobody's going to say that's not realistic. Of course they do. I'll say they're monsters. They're not real people. Hello, Earth to people. Monsters aren't real. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so what I'm going to do is trim this out. I got my paper. Let me have a gander of this. I'll give my, <laughs> I have a gander what I just spent 10 bucks on, good lord. I don't want me the frugal crafter anymore. Call me the temporarily insane shopping at Hobby Lobby cra crafter, because clearly that's what I am. And when I'm with friends in a good mood, I tend to spend more. So look at this. I was, and I think it's because you come and you buy this and it's like binding. You can only see the top, the bottom of the pages and you're flipping through and, ooh, ah, look at that. And then you get home and you realize you have 180 sheets of Chevron. What the heck are you going to do with that? Oh my gosh. What I need to do is get together with some people and we all need to buy our paper packs and then split them up, I think. All right. So that's stamped. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and I got some scraps here, and I'm going to stamp a sentiment from this set, the Henry Says set. I've actually used this a lot. It's quite nice. What do we want to do? How about it's your birthday? That's awfully unique. Not. That's all right. Uh, I need a bout, and I need some ink, and we're just going to stamp that bad boy and not worry about it. Oh, voila. There we go. Okay, so why don't we set these two aside for the moment. And we'll get our lovely card base. We'll put our ink pad away so we don't stick our hand in it. And a um, little quick tip here when you fold, when you've got one of these pre creased cards, you want to fold so the indented side is on the outside and the um, bumped up side is on the inside. Just in case you didn't know that, I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's how you do it. So I got this paper like a couple years ago, and I think it's kind of fabulous. And it's die cuts with a view, midnight spell stack, and I think I want to use this for one of the backgrounds. So I'm just gonna have a look, see through here, and see what strikes my fancy. Oh, look, those already had monsters on it. And oh, maybe that. Let's just have a. Oh, that kind of works. No, oh, I'm covering up too much of the haunted house. I think. What else do we got here? Maybe that. Maybe I will dip into that chevron paper after all. Let's see. What are you? This is just riveting, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody still there? <laughs> Probably not. Lindsay's lost her damn mind today. Oh, I like that. Okay, we're gonna go with that. And, gee, do we want to break into the chevron? That was probably unnecessary. 
Although maybe a little black and white chevron. Give me, you know, make me feel a little less guilty about my purchase if I use a little black and white chevron in the background. There we go. I can't return it now. I've taken out a piece of paper. Can't do it. Won't do it. All right, let's just see. What do we want to do? Make that five by seven or do you want it a little smaller? I think a little bit smaller. Just a hair. Oops, I think I cut that crooked. Well, it's going to be a lot smaller than the folks. There we go. And I need to trim that other paper a little bit smaller so we can see both kinds. Yeah, we'll trim this down a little bit too. And go five and a half maybe on that one. Oh boy, this is something else, isn't it? All right, maybe I'll leave offset it. I don't know. There we go. Where's the top of my car? Let's try to keep it right side up. Oh, and I bought this and get it at Hobby Lobby because I felt the need to go to AC Moore afterwards because I had another coupon burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> Good Lord. When I go on a binge, I really go on a binge. These were on sale six, a package of six or five dollars, and I thought I'd give them a try because my double sided photo safe tape I usually use has gone up pretty high in price lately. It's kind of irksome. I tried this to see how it how it does, and I think that's gonna be on top because the spiders dangle downwards, don't they? Spiders dangle downwards, don't they? Ooh, a little voice and diction exercise. Actually, this seems to work pretty easily. Hey, I think I uh, made a wise purchase. I actually, only spent two dollars at AC Moore because I had a ten dollar off um, gift card. Uh, uh, what you call it? Reward certificate, and I had I want that crooked, and I had a fifty percent off coupon, and I bought a thing of resin. And I bought that set of six of those. It only cost me, how much did it cost me? $2.09 with tax. Thank you very much. Oh, we're only at 11 minutes. I'm totally going to finish this card. Totally. <laughs> Don't know if anyone's going to watch it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to get finished. I'm pretty sure I'm going to upload it. I should have totally put up. Uh, well, no, I really couldn't. All right, I'm going to get stuff all over the back of that. Hey, I'm digging this. This is... Uh, I have to say, I don't mind adhesive runners, safe. There, yeah, I like the crookedness. Then, see, when you put things on crooked, little quick tip for you, it doesn't matter if everything else crooked because no one's gonna know. I'm gonna purposely keep this kind of funky. Let's keep it funky now. There we go. Oh yeah, it's your birthday, man. It's your birthday, kid. I think I wanna, um, I do want to color that. That would be pretty cool if it was purple. I don't have anything on my lovely mat. It's got <laughs> watercolor sprayed on it. <laughs> oh, look at that. See, I do that sometimes. I'll take my alcohol marker and I'll just color it. And it usually, those little marker lines usually blend right out. Don't even have to think about it twice. And we're going to ink the edges. And there, that's, that's going to go on there. This is a card for a four-year-old. So, it's not like I'm going to be judged. Not by the four-year-old, anyway. And hopefully not by my sister. Oh boy, this is, uh, that's all right. Now, I feel like I kind of need something embellishment-wise on this. I know I said, oh yeah, here's what I'll do. I was saying that I was just going to use what I had, and I am. I'm going to use these Google Eyes. I probably shouldn't even stamp the eyeballs on there because I'm going to Google it up. Google it up. I wonder if, uh... Might need to get a different adhesive though. Maybe I'll even put a big eyeball there, cover up those little spotty eyes. And let's get some teeny weenies out for this guy. Oh, he's got oddball eyes. We gotta do one little one and one big one. Oh, this one has an eyelash on it. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that's kind of. Does the Google's Google on that one? Oh, yeah, they do. All right. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna... that's all it needs for embellishments. And I wonder if this will work on that. We'll just uh, have a have a, tr a test out here, won't we? I'll probably end up jamming this adhesive. That's what I usually do with these types of adhesives, and that's why I usually don't bother with them. So yeah, I pretty much felt like a lunatic after my little Hobby Lobby trip today because I came home with two paper big paper packs and a mat stack and a package of white cardstock and. What else did I get? Oh, I got a bird cage. I'll have to show you that on one of my other videos. I for I like to keep my ribbon and my lace um, in bird cages. I have a, another bird cage. I got it a um, second hand. No, what do you call it? Antique place, and um, it works great. And I can just pull out little bits of lace as I need it. And um, so I got another one 
for another box of lace that I had been given. That's how things you've been given end up costing you money, because then you have to store them. But it's awfully cute. It's on the other side of the room. I'll have to show you that. Probably not today, because I'm probably not going to have time. Maybe I will. We'll see. You're, you're taking a glimpse inside my, my random stream of consciousness mind here. Blue dots would have been quicker. But you know what? That's good. I'm happy with it. So um, actually, you know what? Why don't I spin this around and show you my birdcage? I wonder if it's lit up enough over there. Oh, let me see. Um, take Well, let me pause it so you don't have to take Dramamine here. So see up there, that teal one's the one I bought today. I know it's a little crooked because my camera's on a tripod and it's a little wonky there. Um, so yeah, and there's my other one that I got at the uh, antique place that's got all my other ribbons in there. And there's oh, my ribbon shelf and you've seen my studio before. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll go back to the table. We'll take one more look at the card. Here's the card. I thought, well, I got a few minutes. Why don't I make a envelope to go with it? Well, actually not make an envelope because these are the uh, cheapies that come with their envelopes. And I think I'll line the envelope. So to do that, what I'm going to do is take a scrap of this paper, seven inches wide, and I'm going to trace the flaps here um, and make myself a little custom liner. And let me grab a pencil. Oh, I got one right here. Um, I hope this wasn't too long and boring for you because I didn't really plan anything and I'm <laughs> not my normal smooth self <laughs> today. <laughs> but um, now with that guy, I figure I'm making a card when I turn on the video camera and see how it goes. All right, I'm going to trim this out. This is so easy. Actually, I don't have to use this big of a piece of paper. I could conserve that a little bit, but take out 180 sheets of it, so... I guess I don't, I can, uh, I can splurge a little bit here. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of zip right along the top there. I actually like this little tape runner. It doesn't gum up on me. I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. Slide this in the envelope. It's a five by seven envelope for five by seven cards. So I just made a, uh, one thing about this though, you have to be careful before you stick it down because it really wants to hold. Oh, oh crap. Okay. Pardon my French. There we go. That's crooked. That's totally crooked, but you get the idea. <laughs> oh, well. It's four years old. I don't think he's going to care. All right. Put our card in there. There we have it. And uh, you know what? Let me uh, show you those uh, those boomwhacker things because I think they're pretty cool. Um, so this is what I got him for his birthday. This uh, These boomwhackers. It's a set of tubes and you they're all different notes. And um, his mother's going to love this. You hit it on things. And it makes the different notes. I think it's going to be really fun for my four-year-old nephew, who I don't live with and have to hear that music all the time. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.